All right, I'm gonna have fun with today's episode. Uh, yeah, so I have this long time interest in making music, mostly electronic music, like dance music that DJs would play in the club. But also as part of that, I, I've studied music theory, music composition, music production, and I'm happy to learn from everyone. So like I have my own styles that I'm into, but I, I want to learn as much as possible from as many sources as possible, because sometimes you're going to get just that epiphany, that aha moment from somewhere that you wouldn't expect. And specifically recently, I, in my spare time studying music stuff, when I'm not studying marketing and copywriting and business, well, I started looking into the work of Max Martin. Now, I don't know if you know who Max Martin is, but he is uh, like the modern music world's most prolific number one hit writer. And frankly, like since the Beatles, in fact, the Beatles are the only individuals who have written more number one chart topping hits than Max Martin. And he's actually still making music. Now, if you don't know his name, that's because he's not the one performing these hits. He's the one who is writing them, producing them. He actually at this point has 25 Billboard Hot 100 number one hits, six of which debuted at the top of the charts. And because he's such a force to be reckoned with in music, other people have dissected his work, like we as copywriters and marketers dissect the work of top copywriters. And like top copywriters, he's also occasionally shared some of his methods. And so I was studying him, I was taking a bunch of notes, and I realized that there was a big correlation between copywriting and marketing communications and, and, and some of the principles that have guided his success as the number one musical hit ma maker today. And so I thought today, like I would, I would take some of those notes and share with you the top 10 marketing lessons from Max Martin, today's number one musical hit maker. And by the way, if you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way that you can so I know and so that the magical algorithms of the internet who will share more content like this with you and share this content with more people like you who will find it valuable will go to work and, uh, and, and get this out there as much as possible. So let's dive into today's episode. These are the proven direct response, marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Furr, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. Now, uh, before we get into the, the, the top 10 list here today, um, I, I, I want to say that today's sponsor, like every day's sponsor, is me. And if you're here because you're a musician or in the music world and you want to learn about Max Martin, okay, great, that's awesome. And uh, just just come along for the ride. If you are in copywriting, marketing, entrepreneurship, if you are putting out the marketing messages that that sell, then make sure that you're signed up for my BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com daily emails. That's BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. The link is in the description. I put out content every day, uh, plus more exclusive content for email subscribers only. And it's just always aimed at delivering as much value as possible to you. You know, you get episode updates and and more. And again, that's at BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. So just to, just to like pile on the proof here and give you a sense of how big of a force Max Martin has been in pop music, I want to just list out quickly his number one hits before we dive into the top 10 list. All right, so starting in 1998, he hit, he hit the top of the charts for the first time with Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. Yep. He helped write it. And then It's Gonna Be Me by NSYNC. I Kissed a Girl by Katy Perry. So What by Pink. My Life Would Suck Without You by Kelly Clarkson. Three by B Britney Spears. California Girls by Katy Perry featuring Snoop Dogg. Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. Raise Your Glass by Pink. Hold It Against Me by Britney Spears. E.T. by Katy Perry with Kanye West. Uh, Last Friday Night TGIF by Katy Perry, Part of Me by Katy Perry. Yeah, he's done a lot of work with Katy Perry. One More Night by Maroon 5. We're Never Ever Getting Back Together by Taylor Swift. Roar by Katy Perry. Dark Horse by Katy Perry featuring Juicy J. Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Blank Space by, by Taylor Swift. Bad Blood by Taylor Swift featuring Kendrick Lamar. 
Can't Feel My Face by The Weeknd, uh, Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, Save Your Tears by The Weeknd and Ariana Grande, My Universe by Coldplay and BTS. And, you know, that was 2021. Who knows what's going to happen in 2022 with his next string of hits. So if you're a marketer or a copywriter, like why, why would you even care, by the way, uh, before we get into this top 10 list, why would you even care? Well, um, I, I actually go back to Eugene Schwartz, one of the greatest copywriters of all time, uh, just complete genius of copywriting and marketing. Um, and he had a rule that he followed that if a movie hit, I call it his blockbuster movie rule. If a movie hit blockbuster status, if everybody in America was going out to see this movie, he had to go out and see it too because he wanted to get a sense of what everybody was responding to, what the market was responding to. And so maybe, maybe like the list of music that I just listed off for you is not your taste. It's, you know, some of those songs are good. They're definitely catchy. They're not necessarily my taste or first choice in music either. But I will say that like they are undeniably powerful and that's why they hit the number one spot. That's why they reach the top of the charts, right? And so even if you're just doing it because you follow something similar to Eugene Schwartz's blockbuster movie rule, it can be useful to you to pay attention to what everybody is paying attention to. So with that, let's dive into, like Max Martin, he has some, some general rules that he follows, some general rules that he's taught, some guidelines that he shared, some just patterns to how he writes music that have been observed and that are in my notes here that fall under the top 10 marketing lessons from Max Martin. Okay. Uh, and I'm realizing that I should have done this like uh, David Letterman and done the countdown from number 10, um, but I counted up from number one. So either way, <laughs> number one, most of his songs are in a major key. Now, if you're not into like music theory, if you don't under understand this, basically like general vast oversimplification rule is that songs in a minor key are sad songs in a major key are happy. So there's this like general, happy, upbeat, positive feeling to songs in a major key. And the, the, the marketing lesson here is that even maybe if we're talking about some kind of negative event, it can be helpful to make sure that we are directing our marketing, our copywriting, our selling messages towards that positive outcome. People respond well to things that ultimately are directed to the positive outcome. And so even if we're talking about negative things, even if we like maybe introduce some minor chords into the music, right? It's still about directing things towards the positive. All right, lesson number two. Most of the music is in the key of G. Now, you know, maybe this is getting a little... <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe I'm, I'm connecting a few more dots than I than I need to here, but um, the key of G is a very familiar sound. Like that, like all the notes are very familiar. He's not using some obscure uh, key with a lot of um, with a lot of sharps or flats or whatever. It's 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 a very familiar sound. And the other thing that's worth noting is that it's easy to play, easy to sing, etc. So people are responsive people have general positive feelings towards what is familiar um, there's also a, a a an essence of simplicity that is there that if you want your marketing message to resonate it probably needs to be something that is fairly repeatable um, to, to actually be able to put out a marketing message that somebody is able to understand enough that they could repeat to another person, that can mean your message is, number one, easier to understand and, and consume and, um, and take action on, but then it's more repeatable and that can be beneficial to you as well. All right, so number two was most were in this familiar key of G. Number three, most of his music actually follows really basic 
chord progressions. And in fact, one of the most popular chord progressions in all of music is the one, five, six, four, or there's variants like six, four, one, five, et cetera. These are very simple harmonic structures. They are, um, it, it's, it's a limited number of chords, so the song's not going all over the place. Most of his songs are three to four chords, and none of his songs are more than six chords total in the, uh, in the songwriting. And so, again, like, the, part of the reason that most music is written in this one, five, six, four, or not most music, but why this is the most common um, chord progression and harmonic structure is because it just has a, a, a comfortable, familiar feeling. It hits the right notes at the right time. It's like the right beats, the right relationship between the chords. And even as much as we want our marketing messages to feel unique, um, if we don't structure them in a way that makes sense, if we are kind of all over the place with our messaging and the structure doesn't flow smoothly and it doesn't make sense, then it's not going to persuade anyone. And so, you know, taking a lesson from these, these basic fundamental chord progressions that if you understand that, that basic underlying structure of, you know, for example, hook story offer or, um, you know, problem agitate, invalidate, solve, ask, or, um, or there's the, the lead, the pitch and the offer. Uh, for a longer sales message, like these things, these these familiar structures are familiar and so commonly used for a reason, right? All right, number four, uh, they meet timing expectations, and this is this is related. This is this is a closely related idea that um, the way that most Western music is structured is in a four bar structure or a multiple of four bars. So four bars, eight bars, very occasionally 12 bars, unless you're blues, then it's often 12 bars, um, or 16 bars at the most for some pop music, uh, depending on tempo and lots of different factors. But basically, music that is in this four bar structure is something where you get like, <laughs> The, the changes come at the expected time. Um, the, the, the timing expectations of the music, it's not like taking a left turn in the middle of a bar or where you would expect it to, um, to, to keep going in the same direction. Likewise, it's not going too long in one direction before it changes up. And so this, this meeting timing expectations is about being able to say the things that you need to say, and, um, and, and for example, one, one thing that is really effective in copy is having bullet points in multiple, well, in, in odd numbers and in threes. So you introduce a bullet point and then it's, or you introduce like a bullet list and then it's point one, point two, point three, and you're out of there. And that's a way that you can meet timing expectations in copy. Introducing a section making your point and moving to the next section is a way that you can meet timing expectations and copy. Again, it's, it's, it's about just basically writing copy that, that flows. And I'm realizing this point is going on way too long. So let's switch to number five, being quick to the point. So um, specific with regards to Max Martin's songwriting, typically the, well, the first chorus always hits within one minute. And so the first, the chorus is the most singable, most familiar part of the song. It's the song that, or it's the part that repeats often, right? And he wants that to hit within the first minute. And most of them hit within 31 to 40 seconds. Uh, so specifically, you're getting to the most singable, most familiar part of the song within 30 seconds in, actually within 40 seconds in, in most cases. And the way that this applies to copywriting is you really want to get your big idea across fast. You want to get your main message across fast. In fact, a lot of times, logically, 
our desire as writers is to like build up 0.1, 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and then like the big epiphany at the end, right? As a copywriter, we actually benefit from flipping that. It's big epiphany supported by 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Right. It's and that that big epiphany needs you need to come out strong with that big epiphany so that people are engaged from the beginning. Also, in music, the hook is sometimes the term for that chorus. Right. And so coming out with the hook to hook their attention is a it's a powerful way to think about this and in alignment with how Max Martin writes number one hits. Now, I thought that this one was really interesting. So. Uh, Max Martin is from Sweden, and he did not grow up speaking English as his first language. And so he paid more attention to the sound of the words of like English pop music, American pop music, or British pop music. He, he paid more attention to the sound of the words. And so a lot of his music is written around words that just sound good to him. But also he is very careful, and this is one of the points that he made directly, that all of his lyrics are clear and easy to understand. And he actually aims for a fourth grade uh, like level or below with, you know, even a fourth grader could sing his songs and understand the basic messaging, the basic words. And there's been plenty of research on this in copywriting and marketing that readability scores impact response and having low grade level readability scores will lead to a higher response because you are doing your prospect, your customer, the favor of communicating in clear and simple language. Even when you're talking about something complex like investing, lower grade level of readability, even if you're speaking to professionals and people who are highly educated, lower grade level of readability does make a difference in terms of getting them to respond. They appreciate that they don't have to take the time to wade through your messaging. And like with music, it resonates when more people understand it. Number seven, intros are unique and short. Uh, so this is, you know, this is kind of tied to some of the previous points, but uh, typically his goal is within two seconds, you recognize the song. So this song should sound unique within two seconds. And so, uh, you know, it's very rare that maybe the drum sound or something is, is what's gonna be completely unique. So instead, like what element of the song can you introduce in the first two seconds that is, that's gonna stand out. So as soon as it comes on the radio, people are like, oh, this song, I'm ready to listen to this. Like, I'm excited about this, right? Um, also specific to the intros being unique and short, oftentimes he designs them as one to four bars. So this would be one of the few places where there would be an exception to that four bar rule. So he's just thinking like, what's the one to four bar intro that can we can we can just get people excited by? And then uh, sometimes it even goes straight into the chorus, the hook of the music. But he's always thinking about how can I capture attention right at the beginning and pull it into the music so that I have the audience, so that I have the engagement. And hey, I mean, if you are, if you're a marketer, if you're a copywriter, this should be so familiar to you that your audience needs to recognize the uniqueness of your message really in the first couple seconds in order for it to be engaging on a large scale. Um, this is this one I thought was really interesting. Um, he focuses on very simple progression and development in his um, in his music. So he introduces one new element or instrument at a time in the composition, and he only aims to have three to four main parts at once. So what he's really saying is, I want this to be something that is uh, simple for the listener to connect with, and it is not throwing a bunch of complexity at them. And so, you know, there can be some fascinating music that's very complex and full of layers that are moving in different directions and from a purely technical compositional point and maybe from a performance point, that music can be completely fascinating. And yet, when you're looking at mass appeal, 
This whole idea of I'm going to introduce one element and people are going to get familiar with it and then I'm going to introduce the next element and I'm going to introduce the next element, but I'm not going to try to do too much because I want people to really feel like they can... Basically, one of the big things about this is the ability to like hum along to the song as it goes. Next up, he uh, number nine is simplification. And a general rule that he has that he stated is that you don't want to overwrite. Just don't overwrite. You want to keep it simple. You want to keep it as simple as possible. You want it to just be something where it, it's simple. <laughs> so we'll leave it at simplification. Don't overwrite, whether you're talking music or copy. And then number 10. Uh, keeps he keeps it interesting. So one of the things that happens in copy uh, and in marketing is if you start to write long messages, there can be some repetition and there probably should be some repetition. And in music, when you're going, you know, a lot of music is written like A, B, A, B, C, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, A, B. Like it's there, there's a lot of repetition of different parts and segments and motifs and um, and and in that repetition, it is possible for it to feel too familiar. Our ears want to hear a song where familiar elements are repeated and are brought back in, but you don't want it to be too familiar. So what he does is he intentionally changes up things like notes or rhythms or whatever is necessary to keep it interesting and compelling between the song parts. So for example, if I'm repeating elements of my offer in copywriting, I'm going to be addressing the same, let's say five parts of the offer at different points. But each time that I address it, I'm going to use different wording. Maybe it's going to be a little bit tighter the next time. It's going to be a little like whatever it is, whatever the repetition is, I can't just repeat it. And I can't repeat it with the same rhythm and the same cadence. It has to be changed up and kept interesting. All right, uh, so, so that's that. The uh, top 10 marketing lessons from Max Martin. Uh, most in a major key, having that happy feeling. Most in G for the familiar sound. Basic chord progressions, basic structure. Uh, meet the timing expectations. So. Things are hitting when you expect them to hit. Quick and to the point. You got you to gotta come out of the gates like big, right? Um, all lyrics clear and easy to understand. You want people to resonate in a, in a quick and clear way. Intros are unique and short. Have it instantly recognizable and like instantly interesting. Simple progression and development. Don't overcomplicate any of it. Simplification, don't overwrite in general and keep it interesting. Uh, change things up and, you know, keep it moving. So with that, I'm Roy Firth, this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I don't know, this was fun to me. I hope it's fun to you. I hope it's interesting to you. Uh, if you want more from me, especially about marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship, remember, check out the link in the description to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. Get my daily emails on marketing and copywriting, including episode notifications and more exclusive content for email subscribers. And I'll also include a link to Max Martin's Wikipedia page because you might want to learn more. You might be interested. You can certainly check that out. Uh, one last time, I'm Roy Fur, aiming to increase your marketing genius one episode at a time. And sometimes it takes looking outside of marketing to find unique ways to stimulate our creativity and our marketing genius. And that's what I aim to do here. And I'll catch you again in the next episode. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.